see, um, so if you select, you know, click around in the photo selector a little bit, you'll get to see some exterior projects uh, in different types of stones. Um, the, there's a long answer and a short answer. The short answer is all natural stone is supplied on a customer determines use basis. Uh, this goes back to the engineering information that's required to certify, I guess, a stone as being exterior quality. The truth is very little stone has any sort of uh, certification. There are some engineering standards. You'll also hear, uh, you know, architects come back with, uh, you know, two inches thick and, you know, all these other requirements. M m most of those requirements, um, they might apply, but there's no way to really work through it. We maintain, uh, we maintain, we, we have some testing information for uh, many of our stones uh, from an engineering testing perspective, but we don't really rely on it much. We use it more as a reference to the general characteristics of the stone because really there's nothing we can assert a warranty with. So we, we can't warranty it. And that's across the entire industry. Basically no stone and is almost no stone in any of the types of applications that we get into uh, is certified for a certain type of use. You know, that's for, you know, uh, high rise, uh, stone cladding on high-rise office buildings and roofing and certain things like that, but not not stuff that we commonly uh, come across. Uh, I think it's important to understand that there's kind of two types of stone uh, work. Uh, one one is uh, structural, you know, and this is where we're using uh, thick stones, patios, where the st structure of the stone is important to the project. The other is decorative, like what we do every day, uh, what you guys do every day. It's thin materials, properly installed. Uh, they have some sort of a lifespan. Um, nobody's, you know, shocked when, you know, the house is sold in eight years and, you know, the next owner comes in and does a, uh, uh, you know, looks at a bathroom and takes the stoner, the tile up and redoes it. Uh, so they have a limited lifespan. They're decorative uh, in some ways, you know, like a thick coat of paint, uh, and they can be redone. They can be repaired. Uh, so our industry specializes in the decorative use of stone. So does it make sense to use stone decoratively in an exterior space? Uh, not in a when, when you need a structure, like in certain types of uh, you know paving or you know around you know, pools and, you know, you know, mansion type houses and stuff like that. You really need the structure there. But when you're dealing with uh, coming out of the front door and doing a decorative pad, you know, for the entranceway or a, uh, a stone that, uh, you know, goes from the side door to the driveway or a back patio where, you know, you grill and uh, have uh, parties, that sort of thing, it can make an awful lot of sense. Uh, firstly, it's quite a lot less expensive and you need a lot less preparation work. Uh, we can go over any concrete, sound concrete surface uh, with your uh, uh, setting materials companies and companies like Schluter. It's theoretically possible to go over uh, certain kinds of wood surfaces, decks and things like that properly prepared. So, and you're installing with a normal tile guy, with a normal thin tile, uh, it could easily be, uh, you know, less than half the cost of doing something structural. Uh, and uh, so you could, you know, literally think of it in terms of being able to repair it or do it twice for the same, you know, sort of investment. So it makes an awful lot of sense. So, uh, Although we don't have engineering information to support it, and we can't supply a warranty, and we supply our stones on a customer determined use basis, we have tons of field experience. And that's where those photos that I was showing you come in. They uh, offer an, uh, uh, a selection of stones that we commonly use. There's only a few that I would never use. Uh, softer multicolor types of materials, like our, uh, looking through here, like our, earth slate or 
uh, cashmere gold or uh, copper or you know madras or calico those don't really have enough strength to hold up for uh, the kinds of periods that you know would be a normally expected uh, exterior application but many of the other stones are uh, ha we have hundreds of projects that uh, have held up quite well uh, Brazilian materials are are generally go to you know we we can do an awful lot of exterior applications in a 3 8 inch tile using uh, exterior grade mortars uh, you know you know, part of the reason that they, uh, for these thick stones was their weight. Uh, with uh, masonry uh, setting techniques, uh, you know, historical ways to install uh, masonry paving, with, uh, use sand and cement mortars, uh, where literally they're taking a bucket full of sand and a bucket full of uh, cement and mixing it together with often without latex modification. Whereas in uh, our industry, we use these you know, terrific modern latex uh, and, uh, you know, technical grouts and mortars. And uh, we know that the modern uh, setting materials are going to hold, they're going to stick to the stone, they're going to stick to the uh, subsurface. Uh, we also know the grouts with the latex modifications are going to seal the joints well. Uh, in the masonry business, you know, they, as often as not, would take five pieces of blobs of mortar and bang a you know, uneven stone into it. And they, uh, uh, and then they don't even, you know, they don't use grout, they point it. And so the grout, uh, the joints are leaky, moisture gets underneath it. And they needed the weight to hold the stone down basically as the sub, uh, as the masonry materials, as the uh, mortars would uh, degrade over time. But with the modern setting materials and our modern methods, uh, uh, the Tile Council of North America uh, and the Handbook for Ceramic Tile and Stone Installation are, uh, you know, our guidelines. And you know, when I was a, a young man in the industry, those guides were, you know, essentially a flyer. And now there's hundreds of pages of information, and it's contributed to by every significant tile manufacturer, setting materials manufacturer, and it's an ongoing thing. By following those methods and materials, we need to back butter uh, uh, the uh, uh, stone in, and we're achieving 90 plus percent uh, back coverage. So there's not that moisture that gets underneath them. So freezing and thawing is quite a lot less of an issue. Uh, so uh, in in that environment, even a thin tile can go down, and our experiences they hold up pretty well. Now, in exterior circumstances, the um, uh, it's important to know that yeah, there can be some degradation of that surface over time. It's outside; it's a very difficult environment. Uh, you know, there can be moisture that gets in from the sides, or you know, something having to do with drainage, or you know, that sort of thing. So, having additional material on the project site is really important. Uh, you know, some attic stock, some garage stock, and in case in a number of years a repair needs to be made or something like that, it can be done. Uh, uh, also, you know, stone is natural; it has some porosity. You know, leaves can patina the surface. Uh, uh, stone can bleach in the sun. So, you know, there'll be some changes over time, but in uh, most circumstances, we can look at uh, most of our Brazilian materials, certainly our quartzy materials like the desert gold or the uh, Camacho white are used outside all of the time and the travertines are used regularly. Uh, there's a, a, I'd mentioned about a uh, people asking about bluestone. And in my experience, the word bluestone is a specific thing uh, in the industry. It's a Pennsylvania native sandstone. It's a, uh, comes from upstate Pennsylvania and Western New York. And uh, it's used all the time. You've seen, you know, uh, many projects, whether you noticed it or not. Uh, we cross-reference that stone to our uh, Brazilian gray. Uh, has a very similar colorway and can work really well uh, as an alternate to bluestone. So we sell projects uh, like that. A nice thing about the Brazilian gray is it's a slate. So it has a nice slate, silky texture. It's not as um, gritty and sandy as, as a sandstone would be. So it works really well. It's also really nice to go from the interior to the exterior 
uh, or around pools or uh, uh, areas because it's nice and soft. And being a gray color, it's, uh, it doesn't heat up as much as darker colors. Uh, and another one that we use is our coat of blue limestone, which is uh, uh, technically a limestone with a cleft finish, but it uh, has that same basic colorway, is pretty durable and holds up well outside and uh, has a good handsome bluestone look. Uh, sometimes, uh, especially in the South, the word bluestone means, you know, anything that's used outside uh, as opposed to like exterior flagging or those sorts of things. Uh, sometimes they're talking about this blue, bluish color and uh, specifically about bluestone. So that's something you may hear, uh, but that's the way we interpret that.